Welcome everybody to today's video. We're going to be taking a look at the Supermicro 5018A-TN4 server. This machine was ordered from Newegg as a bare bones kit and it retailed for $734 Canadian at the time of this video. There was very little in the way of accessories included with this server. A quick start guide, drive mounting screws, rack mounting hardware and a power cord were the only other items in the box. As for the server itself, this machine is a very compact 1U unit. The front panel is mostly taken up with air intakes and a small interface panel consisting of the power and reset buttons with five LED indicator lights for power, activity, LAN 1, LAN 2, and information. The rear panel houses one serial port, two USB 3.0 ports, and two USB 2.0 ports. Above those is the IPMI connector. Next to that, you will find the four RJ45 Ethernet connectors. Last, we have the VGA port for your display. Also visible on the rear panel is the single horizontal PCIe expansion slot. Opening the chassis, we get our first look at the internal components. This server features an Intel Atom C2750 8 core processor with 4 megabytes of onboard cache and a base frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. It can turbo to 2.6 gigahertz when required. This processor also features a 20 watt TDP design, so overall power consumption for this machine should be quite low. The low TDP also allows for the use of a passive heat sink on the CPU with a single chassis fan to promote airflow. This server has support for up to 32 gigabytes of unbuffered ECC DDR3 memory operating in dual channel mode. There are four 204 pin SODIMM slots available. The server does not come with any pre-installed memory as it is a bare bones kit and it's very important that the memory you purchase for this machine be unbuffered ECC. It will not post with any other kind of memory. For this particular build, we selected a pair of Kingston 4 GB SODIMMs. I'll put the exact part number down in the video description because these memory modules worked without issue. Most of the user reviews state that this server is quite fussy when it comes to memory, so make sure that you order supported modules. The full memory support list is available on the Supermicro website. Again, I will put the link down in the video description. For hard drive support, the motherboard offers four SATA 2 3 gigabit per second connections, plus two more SATA 3 6 gigabit connections. However, the number of hard drives that you can actually install is limited by the available space in the chassis. Our unit did not come with the optional drive cages that would allow us to mount four 2.5 inch drives. So by just using the mounting points on the bottom of the chassis, you're able to install a maximum of two drives. Any combination of 2.5 or 3.5 inch drives will work when installed side by side. My initial plan when I first looked at the server was to mount two 2.5 inch storage drives and then secure our primary 64 gigabyte SSD between them, but that didn't quite work. I needed another two millimeters of space that we just didn't have, so we had to get creative but more on that later. The server also has a single PCIe by 8 slot that uses a riser to allow for horizontal placement. Now something to keep in mind is that your selection of hard drives has to agree with whether or not you're going to use this expansion slot. For example, if you're going to mount the hard drives inside the optional double bracket, there will not be room for an expansion card. The same thing is true if you mount two 3.5 inch hard drives. If you choose to mount a single 3.5 inch hard drive turned 90 degrees, you will have room for one low profile expansion card. If you choose to install two 2.5 inch drives, as we did in this build, then you'll have room for one full height half length expansion card. You definitely have some options, but if you're planning on using the expansion slot, you need to consider that when you're selecting your hard drives. Once you decide on the placement of your hard drives, you'll need to remove the small piece of perforated non-conductive plastic that's covering the hole. I just poked it out from the underside with my screwdriver. If you're having trouble inserting the screws to mount your hard drive, double check and make sure you've actually removed that piece of plastic. It will prevent the screws from mounting properly to the hard drive. Once you have your hard drives installed, simply connect the data and power cables. There's plenty of space in front of the PCIe riser for cable routing. As you can see from this shot, we had to get a little bit creative to mount the SSD. 
We just secured it to the top of the chassis with some heavy duty two way tape where it's secure and safely out of the way. So out of the box, this server comes with almost everything you need. Just add your hard drives and your RAM and you're ready to go. I closed the chassis back up, plugged in the supplied power cord and it booted up straight away from my Ubuntu 15.04 USB stick. Ubuntu installed with no issues and a few minutes later I had the two one terabyte drives configured in a ZFS mirrored setup with Samba server running to handle the file serving for our Windows based machines. The overall setup on this machine was very straightforward. The layout is simple and easy to work with. The only thing you need to be extra careful about is the restrictions on the hard drive arrangements depending on whether or not you're going to use the PCI expansion slot. So plan your build accordingly. Other than that, I have no complaints. It's a very compact server with plenty of power for home or small office use. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of the Supermicro 5018A-TN4 server. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button, leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'll see all of you right back here in my next video. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.